Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? I hope you are good. In this video, we're going to be doing a comparison between the Apple Watch SE and the Amazfit GTS 2. These are two very different smartwatches. They have different functionalities and are kind of meant for different purposes, but they look pretty similar. So let's do a comparison. Let's see which one you should get and why. Let's go. So I have used and owned both of these smartwatches for quite a long time and I know their strengths, their weaknesses and really what they're about. Um, and you may be wondering which one you should get. If you are wondering which one you should get, then you've probably done some research yourself and you know roughly the difference between the two. Um, I will say straight from the start that the Apple Watch SE is the more advanced smartwatch. It just does a lot more and it is more premium. However, the GTS 2 is cheaper and it is meant for a different purpose and in some ways it is actually the better option depending on what you want a smartwatch for so let me explain let's go into it let's take a look at the specs of both of these smartwatches first so we can take a look at really what we're dealing with so let's start with the apple watch se this is the cheaper version of apple's latest smartwatch it features a 1.78 inch retina display it has a thousand nits of its maximum brightness a 60 percent green screen a 60 percent screen to body ratio and a 326 ppi pixel density for sensors, it features an accelerometer, a gyroscope, a second generation heart rate sensor, a barometer, an altimeter, and a compass. It also features internal GPS, Bluetooth 5.0, a loudspeaker, a microphone, and 32 gigabytes of internal memory. The Apple Watch SE is supposed to be the cheaper option for the Apple Watch range. It also features the App Store, so it can expand its functionality uh, with hundreds and hundreds of apps, some of which are not particularly useful, but some of which do actually uh, is, are actually worth downloading. The design of the watch is very sleek. It features that um, a metal kind of body with this um, scrolling button here, which you can use to unlock the menus and scroll and select different things. It's very, very sleek, very, very Apple. What, what, what we, well, it's what we expect from Apple. It all just works really well and is just very um, sleek and stylish. But it is also uh, on the expensive side. I mean, this is actually a cheap, device for an Apple Watch. It is the cheapest Apple Watch of the new ones, uh, but it still is pretty expensive for anyone who's just getting started with smartwatches or smart technology. So yeah, just bear that in mind. It is definitely more expensive than the GTS 2. Speaking of the GTS 2, let's take a look at the specs of this smartwatch and let's see what we're dealing with. The GTS 2 features a 1.65 inch AMOLED display with a resolution of 348 by 442 pixels, a pixel density of 341 ppi and a maximum brightness of 450 nits. The watch is 9.7 millimeters thick and weighs 24.7 grams. For sensors, it features a PPG heart rate sensor, 24 hours, a SPO2 tracker, an air pressure sensor, an accelerometer, a gyroscope, a compass, and an ambient light sensor. It also features internal GPS, Bluetooth 5.0. It's waterproof to five meters and features three gigabytes of internal memory. It does not feature an app store like, it also features a speaker and a microphone. Unlike the Apple Watch SE, it does not have access to an app store. So whatever is on the watch is what you're stuck with. You can't expand that functionality. However, what you can, but that's not really what the watch is designed for. This is designed specifically as a health and fitness tracker with some extra things on the side, like, like the speaker and the microphone, which gives you access to voice commands, Amazon Alexa. There's also stuff like, uh, you can take phone calls, dictate messages. There's a music control app. There's a calendar, a stopwatch and all kinds of kind of lifestyle things that may help you get through the day, but nothing like you can get with the Apple Watch, which will be able to download apps from different companies. So really guys, that is what it comes down to. What do you really want to use your smartwatch for? Do you wanna use it just to track your health and fitness, or do you wanna use it for stuff like maps, stuff like audio books, um, things like remote control cameras? There's, um, do you wanna read the news on your watch? Do you want to have access to um, Uber apps? Do you want to order an Uber from your watch? Do you wanna do all that kind of stuff which is possible with the Apple Watch, which is not possible with the GTS? but what is your budget? But remember to get all of that stuff, you need to pay for it. It will cost you a lot more. 
Just looking at the design of the two smartwatches, um, it's pretty obvious that they are similar. They both feature a square display. The Apple Watch features more premium build in terms of the materials used. It's definitely sleeker, definitely better looking. But the GTS 2, considering the price, is also pretty attractive. It features a screen that is equally as bright, equally as sharp and uh, responsive. The screen is actually a better resolution and a higher pixel density in the GTS 2 than the Apple Watch SE. But to be honest, the difference in technology means that the the Apple Watch does look just as good. The Apple Watch is also slightly thicker and heavier than the GTS 2, which is very, very thin, very comfortable to wear. You barely notice it's even on your wrist. When it comes to fitness and health tracking, the GTS 2 is also pretty advanced. It has all of those sensors that I mentioned from the heart rate monitor to the SpO2 tracker, accelerometer, gyroscope, uh, what else does it have? An ambient light sensor, that kind of stuff. So it really can track quite a lot of health metrics and is pretty advanced in that regard. In fact, it has an SpO2 tracker, whereas the Apple Watch SE does not have that. You have to buy the more advanced Apple Watch to get that sensor. So that is something that the GTS 2 has that the Apple Watch does not. The difference in price, that's quite surprising really. The Apple Watch, as you can see, um, also does not have an always on display. It will turn off and it doesn't show anything when you're not moving or using it. Whereas the GTS 2 had, does have an always on display and uh, will always just be displaying at least the time, even if you're not actually using it or wearing it or looking at it. I do find it a bit annoying that the Apple Watch doesn't have an always on display. It seems like a very expensive product to be off most of the time and that goes into the battery life, which is something else we'll talk about later. While the Apple Watch doesn't have that SPO2 tracker, it does have NFC support so you can make payments on the Apple Watch with Apple Pay. You can't do that with the GTS 2, so I guess you have to weigh up which one is more important to you. Both watches feature internal, both watches feature internal memory. However, the Apple Watch has a lot more. So if you wanted to put more music on your watch, then the Apple Watch is gonna be able to store a lot more. It, what is it? It's um, 32 gigabytes of memory in the Apple Watch versus just three in the GTS. When it comes to accuracy as well, there isn't really much competition. The Apple Watch, again, definitely more accurate, definitely has more advanced fitness tracking features. In fact, it can pretty much detect when you're starting your workouts straight away without you even uh, telling it what to do. Uh, for example, when I am on an elliptical machine or running and I start doing it, I don't need to tell the watch what I'm doing. It will automatically start tracking that as a workout and um, even monitoring the GPS, stuff like that. So it is very advanced in terms of what it can do. There's also all the fitness and health apps that you can download, which will guide you through different workouts, or you can basically get a personal trainer on your smartwatch. So again, yeah, it is just way more advanced. The GTS 2 does struggle sometimes with accuracy. I would say um, the Apple Watch is 90% accurate in terms of tracking, whereas the GTS is probably about 70% accurate. So bear that in mind. It does have a lot of built-in fitness workout tracking modes. So that is something to, um, but you do have to manage manually select them it doesn't just start straight away it can't automatically detect when you're doing it so obviously the apple watch, so the apple watch is clearly storming ahead in terms of its functionality and what it can do but remember the price it's all about value for money not necessarily what you're actually uh, spending it's what value you get from it you may not care if the apple watch has nfc or if it can download uber or if it has a um, slightly better design and build quality because that might not matter to you if all you wanna do is track health and fitness to a certain accuracy level. The GTS 2 would be able to do that and anything else is, I guess, superfluous. And that is essentially what it comes down to. Again, what are you gonna use your smartwatch for? For me, I find myself using the GTS 2 more often and for one reason and one reason only, because the battery life lasts so much longer. The battery life of the GTS 2 is around about uh, five to seven days on a single charge. For the Apple Watch, you can pretty much get a day, maybe a day and a half out of it before you have to charge. So a lot of the time, if I'm out and I forget to charge the watch, it is just dead on my wrist, not doing anything and that really annoys me. So I find myself using this more despite the fact that it's not quite as accurate and doesn't have as many features. I just don't feel the need to use all the features on the Apple Watch SE, um, but that is a personal thing. That is why I tend to use the GTS 2 I do love the Apple Watch. I think it's such a great piece of technology. It's so sleek, so good looking. Um, everything just works as it's supposed to. There are so many apps and even games available on it and very useful apps as well, especially for fitness and exercise. It's just these small things like how it turns off all the time, um, how the battery life isn't very good. For longevity, it just doesn't work for me. 
If the Apple Watch had a battery life that lasted even two days, two and a half days, I would wear it all the time because I can remember to charge something t once every two days. But every day it's just something that's too annoying for me. Um, yeah, I, I love the Apple Watch, really I do. I mean, there's so many things. I mean, you can listen, there's just so many things you can do with it. You can listen to podcasts, you can read the news, you can read, um, there's news apps, there's fitness apps, there's, the screen is gorgeous, so colorful, so responsive. It just looks great, um, but yeah, for me, so the Apple Watch is the better smartwatch by a country mile. Um, it just is in every single way. But in terms of functionality for health and fitness for longevity, I find the GTS 2 just to be an easier watch to deal with. So that's it guys. I hope that's made that clear. I know these are two very different watches. I know these are two very different smartwatches and the comparison is obviously not fair in terms of which one is just better, but I just wanted to point out the differences between them and what you can get out of both of these watches. So yeah, um, I own them both, I will keep them both, I will wear them both depending on what I wanna do. If I wanna work out and if I wanna forget about it, then I will use the um, GTS 2. If I want to go out and just have something cool on my wrist and with some cool apps, then I will use the Apple Watch. But yeah, that's it guys. Let me know what you think of this comparison. Which one would you get realistically? Which What are you actually gonna use your smartwatch for? Um, let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you like this video. Um, I will get back to you with some more pretty soon, so stay tuned. But until then, I will see you around. Bye.